Welcome back to Cards and Comics, and today I've got my top five comic book cover art picks of the week for January 26, 2022. Again, I'm a little late this week, but I think I've got some really awesome uh, comic books that I've picked out for you, and this week is very exciting, a lot of good books. I'm going to start off with my honorable mention, and this is X Deaths of Wolverine number one. And this is a Sam Keith Wolverine cover. And uh, normally this book would have been in my top five. And there was some books I, I put in because of personal collection reasons. Um, because there were some, some things that I just felt like I had to have. <clears throat> but this is a great book. Now, it's selling uh, fairly well right now. Uh, over 100 bucks um, on eBay. So it's a little bit more expensive. It's a 1 to 100. And that's another reason why I didn't put it on the list is because there's some other really expensive books out this week too. So I didn't want every book to be $100 plus. So uh, this is a pretty heavy week in terms of pricing, uh, but a lot of great books. So we'll go into number five. And this is the Human Target number four. And this is not expensive because this is the cover A. So this is, um, you know, the Greg Smallwood cover A. And again, this is, um, you know, a Blue Beetle uh, Ted Cord cover. And he is my favorite comic book character of all time. I have multiple copies of his first appearance. I love the Justice League International, which is this book is the time period of this book is that time period, which is the greatest time period and kind of a comedic series ever for a superhero um, series ever made. Uh, so I, I love all that. It's very nostalgic to me. And this is just a cover price book. No one's going to charge a lot for this book. Um, you're going to get a cover or, hey, probably in a couple weeks, get it for half, half off. So, but to me, it's just a cool looking cover. I love all the little sound effects on it. It's just very retro. And, you know, having um, Blue Beetle on the cover in classic uniform is a um, huge bonus for me. So moving on to number four. So this is one that kind of threw me a little bit because it violated my rule that I've been trying to put in place of not having um, covers with multiple versions of the same art. So this is a virgin variant of Dynamite Comics, the Vampirella Dracula Unholy number two. And this is the Zoe Lachey uh, virgin variant. Uh, not familiar with the name. The, it's a 1 in 25 virgin variant. But I just loved the artwork so much that, and I love it more as a virgin variant than I do with the trade. So yes, it's on the list. I, I really liked it. It's not super expensive. 10 to 25 bucks right now. I think it's going to go up though because it's such a cool cover. Now, it's one of these books that is one of the issues of the hobby today. There's 22 variants I found for this issue. And I just feel like it's getting a little ridiculous with that. And, and I know it's creating a lot of opportunities for artists, but it's so hard to, to, to kind of go through that many covers, you know, as a collector and figure out what you want to get. It's just making, you know, the burnout a lot harder. Um, and so you just have to be so much more selective. Um, and so a lot of these books are just going to sit unsold. There's no way that someone's buying all 22 covers um, unless they just really, really love the series. I just don't feel there's that many people out there that will do that. So I just feel like it's a waste of, of comic books to, to put that many covers out for an issue too for a series like this. But that's me. Number three. Uh, Usagi Yujimbo, Lone Goat and Kid number one, IDW. And so this is a new series, but it's a reprint of older stories that are important to the series as a whole. So it's kind of like, you know, um, it's a reprint series with new covers and new art to a certain extent. So it's going to make it, you know, for, for uh, newer collectors and newer readers to get into the older stories without having to go back and buying those first copies. So from that point, I think it's cool. This is a John Gyeong uh, version variant, and I love just the simplistic, um, you know, uh, art that's on here, the uh, traditional art that's on this cover. And I feel like, you know, it's very different, and it just kind of, I like the artwork that's just so different, it's just striking, and this is one of those covers that's like that. Right now, there's just two sales on eBay between 45 and 50 bucks, so this cover is probably going to be pretty tough to find. And I'm not sure they printed a lot of this one, so if you find it in the wild, great, and uh, I'm going to look for it too. Number two, 
Mary Jane and Black Cat Beyond number one. This is a Beyond tie-in. Um, and so, you know, this is a cool book. Now, I will admit it. It's a little, um, um, I would say like, you know, it's a little bit, you know, pandering, I guess the word for it, um, to the whole Adam Hughes, Campbell, cheesecake cover guys who, you know, <clears throat> want to see a lot of covers with, you know, girls on them. And this is, is a straight callback to ASM 678 where you had, uh, you know, Mary Jane and the cover there was she looked like Venom, you know, Venomized Mary Jane, but, you know, she said the face of Tiger and, you know, so it's, it's kind of a mishmash co throwback because she said it on a, on another cover. So it's like, you know, it's like a combination of multiple homages all together. Um, again, to me, it's a little bit, um, it's a, again, it's a little bit, I think pandering is trying to create something that's immediately, you know, um, wanted by the collectors because this is what, you know, these covers are pulling on other covers that people really like. So I get it. You know, it's a one in 50. It's Adam Hughes, it's Spider-Man. Those are all things I love, but it was one of those covers where I'm like, I struggled almost swapping this with the Sam Keith Wolverine because that cover is, you know, classic Sam Keith Wolverine and just different, you know, his art so different. So, but I'm a huge Spider-Man fan and I'm going to, I'm, I, you know, I'm going to probably buy this cover and I'm going to love it because I'm a dork that likes these books, but Hey, you know, this is, you know, if you're a variant cover guy, this is what you get into. And so I knowing full well that this cover was made to make me go out and buy it because I like Adam Hughes and I like his girl artwork and I like Spider-Man. So you got me Marvel. You got me, um, crap. <laughs> so, um, I know I'm being uh, taken advantage of here, but Hey, you know, it's, it's what you do when you're a collector, right? Uh, number one, and this is no surprise. This book is just, you know, going through the roof. It's so freaking hot. You know, this came out and people were hitting by now it's at a hundred bucks. And on auction, this book has brought almost $600, which is insane for a one in 25, but it's the first appearance of Tosin Oye. And I, you know, and so obviously, you know, a huge first appearance is driving this book and it's a cool looking cover, but you know, I think people are a little nuts. I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's going to be the next two or $3,000 book, but man, it has gone nuclear really quick. Now, you know, this is one of the things where as a variant cover art collector, you know, where you struggle a little bit with, this is a very important cover. Um, obviously it's a very important first appearance for the black Panther, um, mythos. And, but you know, there's other, you know, books in, out for this issue that you could get that's cheaper that I could just not get the real expensive one. And that's the struggle you get into when you're in this space a little bit is, you know, there was a couple of other books um, that were expensive on this list as well. And, you know, when you've got a budget, you know, do you spend all your money on the Black Panther book or do you spread it around a little bit and get some of the cheaper first appearances, right? So that's a struggle that we all face. And I think, you know, for me, um, this is an aspirational book. Maybe it's a book I pick up later in the year. And maybe by waiting, I'm going to pay a lot more money or maybe I'm not, you know, I remember not getting like the first Miss Marvel second printing uh, cover appearance. And now I regret it. Um, <clears throat> not getting the first Riri Williams, uh, you know, variant cover. Um, I kind of wish I had. So sometimes you do regret it because those books are really cool and important, but sometimes they go down. And so it's, it's a gamble either way, right? Either they're going to go up and be great characters and, important uh spider gwen's another one you know not getting the greg land cover when i could have early on now i regret it so you know i think it's like you, you play that game but you got to keep your budget in mind you can't go crazy and just buy everything but it's on the list i'm going to try to track it down but again you know i definitely thought about that when i was putting this book on the list so that's my list for you guys hope you enjoyed it 
and I'll see you next time on Cards and Comics. Bye.